All right, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so what we're gonna talk about uh, in this short video today is about stereo placement of your mixes. Um, even though for the normal records that you're mixing, you're looking at left and right. So we're not gonna be delving into 5-1 or 7-1 surround mixing, but there's a lot more than just left and right in the stereo field when you're mixing. There's also depth um, that you work with. And each instrument that you put in there has to sit in its own little space. So you gotta look at it as almost kinda like a, uh, like a neighborhood. So you've got a big long block, but every house has its specific region where it lives. And unless you got messed up neighbors and they just move into your place, but that's no good. So that's what we're trying to avoid here. So general um, idea of what you do and where you make is you got obviously your drum sitting nice in the middle, main vocal right down the middle. Um, some mixers prefer to put the kick and the snare, especially if you're doing a band right in line. I like to actually spread them out a little bit, um, left and right. It's a trick that I learned um, when I was uh, working with Ronnie St. Germain uh, a couple days. Um, I spent some time with him, and it does. Again, it helps have a place for everything to sit. So in using that field, make sure you're placing your instruments. And again, this goes um, back to the lesson before. Um, before you start adding anything, before you start adding the reverbs or the delays to the guitars or anything, make sure now after you've listened to the song, you understand what the song is about and what you're trying to convey for the artist, start placing your instruments in the right spots and make sure that they're not jumping on top of each other. Um, so for example, you might have, let's say you have four different rhythm tracks for guitars going on. So what I generally do is I'll take the main rhythm guitar tracks, put them left and right, and then the secondary ones a little bit in closer. So that now what you're doing is you're building the field and they're not stepping on each other. Also what you want to do with that is understand what each guitar is doing. So if you have, let's just say, the guitar to your right, my left, um, is a very heavy chunking guitar, like da 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 Well, and the secondary rhythm, say you're playing octaves or something over here, and it's like do 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 you want to separate those. If you put them next to each other, what'll happen is they'll kind of get muddy. So you want to separate your sounds that are different. So if you have a faster guitar and a slower guitar that you're trying to do, separate them out. It gives them a place and, and room to live. Same thing um, when you're doing your drums. Make sure you can do it a couple different perspectives. You can either do the uh, perspective of what it would look like on the kit from the drummer playing. So I'd have, if it was a uh, righty, I'd have my snare obviously here a little bit, the two toms, the floor tom, the kick, and the overhead. So again, you want to separate those out. You can also mix from the perspective of the audience. So in that case, it would be you know, just the opposite. Snare on this side a little bit, um, hi-hat even a little farther on the side, and then your toms placed as well with the overheads. And what that does is it starts opening up your stereo field and your perspective. Um, you also want to look at the instruments that are in the same um, frequency range. Um, so if you have like a high keyboard on one side, you don't want to be putting like piano on top of it. You want to move the piano off, again, so that they're living in their own little areas and they're, um, they're going to become crystal clear to the, uh, to the listener. The other thing is, again, you're not just using stereo left and right. You've got to remember there's depth of field too. So a good mix is going to give you that 3D effect. So the singer's going to feel a little bit more out front and the drums are gonna sit a little bit behind that. And then the guitars will sit left and right, but kind of in the middle. And how you do that is a lot of that is done with EQs. So high-end EQs, if you're pushing more of the higher frequencies, is gonna make whatever you're working with sound like it's coming at you. And as you cut those frequencies off the top, it's gonna make it feel like it's setting back. So for an example, if I have a uh, a main singer, have the main singer out here, and then you have your background vocals. 
you want your background vocals sitting maybe just a hair behind them. So what I will do is I will cut some of those high frequencies off to take some of that presence away so that the, uh, the background vocals are kind of sitting just behind that. Um, then you might have a big you know, group vocal going on, uh, gang vocals. Uh, you know, four, five, six people singing the same thing. You might want to place those a little farther back. Again, so each one of those has not only um, left and right in the stereo field, but front and back. So when you watch, or actually, sorry, when you listen to what's going on then, make sure that if you sit back again at the end of your mixes when you're done and you're listening, close your eyes and you want to be able to pick out immediately where that instrument is. So if it's a full band and I say, okay, where's the bass? You need to be able to like, have your eyes closed and be like, ah, the bass is right here. Where's the rhythm guitar? The rhythm guitar is right here. Where's the piano? The piano's sitting here. Where's the main vocals? Right here. You shouldn't go and have a part where you're kind of searching or um, trying to find an instrument in the mix. If you're searching or trying to find, then maybe that instrument isn't that important or it might not belong there because if um, it could be just taking up space. But make sure that you're giving an importance to each and every individual instrument, um, every vocal, and that it has a clear and specific uh, place within inside of the mix for it to live and for the end user to uh, hear it. And again, that is also going to go back and just enhance the feeling of uh, the song. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, we're trying to keep these nice and short for you guys. Uh, more philosophy type of um, mixing tips. Uh, check us out, Midnight Studios, www.midnightstudiosnj.com. Give us a shout out, 908-454-2929. Uh, and uh, tell your friends, subscribe. And also under the comments, let me know um, other things that you want to hear about or anything that would help you guys out. And again, thanks to uh, Steelwire Productions, uh, my video team here for uh, taking the videos and doing this with me. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.